Welcome to MAT2LB, booklet number 9, fractions part 2, lesson number 3, multiplying fractions, one fraction, and one mixed fraction. Okay, so we've tackled two lessons on multiplying so far. The first one is really going to be our guide, because what our goal all the time is to have one fraction, with just one numerator and denominator, multiplied by another fraction, numerator and denominator. So our second lesson, where we were working with whole numbers, we turned that whole number into a fraction. We're going to do something similar today, except instead of having a whole number, we're going to have a mixed fraction. So that's like a fraction along with a whole number. And we're going to try to turn that into a fraction before we start doing the, uh, the steps for multiplication. So that's what we're after today. Let's have a look at example number one. One quarter times two and two fifths. So the first step is to convert two and two fifths into an improper fraction. So the way to do that, and I'm just going to write it in here small, is to take our denominator and multiply it by our whole number, and that's going to give us 10. We then take our 10, add it to our numerator, and that gives us 12. So our answer then becomes 12 over the original denominator, which is 5. So because we spent time working on uh, mixed numbers in the last unit, doing some conversions, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to move through that step fairly quickly. If you need to do this step, where you work out the mixed number in this level of detail, by all means do it, especially if you're getting right answers. But I'm going to move a little more quickly through it when I'm doing these examples. So what we have here is 1 over 4 times 12 over 5. And now that we've got two fractions, each with one denominator and one numerator, we're going to go about, like we always do, multiplying numerator by numerator, which is going to give us 1 times 12, or 12. And in our denominators, we are going to multiply those uh, together as well. So 4 times 5 gives us 20. So that's our answer so far. We are going to rewrite that, 12 over 20. And we are going to look for the factor, the biggest factor that's common to both of those at the factor chart. So we go look at the factor chart. Factor chart, we're looking at 12 and 20. They have 1 in common, they have 2 in common, they have 4 in common, and that's it. So we are going to use 4 as the factor that we divide both our numerator and our denominator by. So we divide 12 by 4, it gives us 3. We divide 20 by 4, and it gives us 5. So our answer is going to be 3 over 5, or 3 fifths. And that's how we go about uh, multiplying a fraction by a mixed fraction. Again, not a whole lot of new stuff. We do that conversion to get our mixed number, and that's really uh, the only new part of this process. So let's try example two here together as well. Uh, multiply the following fraction by the mixed number, two and one-fourth times one-third. So again, our first step here is going to be to convert this mixed number into an improper fraction. So we have 4 times 2, which will give us 8. We do 8 plus 1, that will give us 9. So our mixed fraction will look like 9 over 4 as an improper fraction. So let's write that out. We have 9 over 4 times 1 over 3 equals. At this point, same as before, we multiply numerator by numerator, which gives us 9 and we multiply denominator by denominator. That's 4 times 3, which will give us 12. And that's our answer so far. We've got 9 over 12. Now we're looking for a factor that is common to both the numerator and the denominator. So common to both 9 and 12. Let's go to the factor chart. So there's 9, there's 12. We have 1 in common, 3 in common. And that's it. So 3 is going to be it. We're going to divide both numerator and denominator by 3. And when we do that, we get 9 divided by 3 is going to give us 3. And 12 divided by 3 is going to give us 4. So our answer is going to be 3 over 4, or 3 quarters. And that's, how, that's the answer for example number 2. So what I'd like you to do now is hit pause in the video, and I'd like you to give example A a try on your own. So remember, the only thing we're really adding here is a conversion of our mixed fraction into an improper fraction. So give this A a try. When you're done, come on back and we'll see how you did. Okay, let's have a look. Our first step, we see a fraction and a mixed number. We want to convert our mixed number. So our mixed number, we've got 3 
times 3, which will give us 9, and 9 plus 2, which will give us 11. So our improper fraction becomes 11 over 3 as a mixed number, or rather as an improper fraction. So let's write this out now. We have 1 over 5 times 11 over 3. We are going to multiply numerator by numerator, which will give us a numerator of 11. And we are going to multiply denominator by denominator, which is going to give us 15. We are going to write that out and see if there are any factors common to both 11 and 15. And when we head over to the factor chart, we'll see that there are none. So 11 over 15 is our answer for example A. What I'd like you to do now is hit pause in the video and give example B a try on your own. When you've got an answer, come on back and we'll see how you did. All right, you're back. Let's start by converting that mixed number into an improper fraction. We have 5 times 4. That's going to give us 20. 20 plus 2 is going to give us 22. So our mixed number as an improper fraction is going to be 22 over 5. So let's rewrite that. 22 over 5 times 1 over 2. And now we're going to multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. So when we multiply the numerator by the numerator, we get 22. And when we multiply the denominator by the denominator, we get 10. So we've got 22 over 10. Let's rewrite that and see if this fraction can be reduced to a lower equivalent fraction. So when we head over to the factor chart, we'll see that the largest factor they have in common is going to be 2. So we divide both numerator and denominator by 2, and that gives us 11 over 5. And that is going to be our final answer for B. So this is the end of lesson number three. At this point, if you're feeling good, head on to the worksheet. And after that, I will see you in lesson number four, where we will start working on division.